The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is absolutely huge like its predecessor Breath of the Wild, easily as one of the most expansive open worlds ever seen in a video game. But just how big is Tears of the Kingdom's map in real world measurements, like meters and feet, and how does it compare to other huge open world games like Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to find out in this video, and the answer to how big Tears of the Kingdom truly is will probably surprise you, because it makes some other games generally considered insanely big seem pretty small in comparison. And I'll even do it mostly spoiler free, but I do have to give a tiny warning for potential map spoilers, so if you don't want to see that I recommend coming back to this video at a later date. But if you're still here, welcome to class because we're going to need a lot of math to do this. But don't worry, it's luckily not that complicated. So I naturally had to start by finding a reference point for scale which I could extrapolate from to find the size of the entire map. What this basically means in simpler terms is that I needed to find a distance in the game which directly translates to a real world measurement. Like for example a character's height or the length of the terrain with a known distance. But unfortunately after having spent hours playing the game I couldn't really find a direct in-game source that would give some sort of measurements in meters or feet. I could of course always just use Link's estimated height at around 160 meters, but the smaller the reference point for scale is the smaller the margin of error becomes, which might make the results highly inaccurate. And I didn't want to rely on luck for this. We also don't really have an official size for Breath of the Wild Link either other than he's a short king, so we didn't want to have to rely on guessing. But the most observant Zelda fans out there might have noticed this small teeny tiny detail of the entire overworld of Tears of the Kingdom being directly based on Breath of the Wild's overworld. And luckily for us, Breath of the Wild actually do have a way to measure distances in meters, and that is with the gliding minigame on the Ridgeland Tower located on Hyrule Field. So inspired by Job's video on measuring Breath of the Wild's map, I decided to cross reference distances in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom to find an easily recognizable location that remained similar between both games, so I could find the exact distance, and I ended up going with Dueling Peaks. I then used the gliding minigame in Breath of the Wild to measure the distances between the tower and Dueling Peaks by using a glitch called the Bow Smuggling Glitch, where you place a bomb in front of you, guard with a shield and aim a bow while simultaneously grabbing the bomb, which will, if done right, make Link hold the bomb while the arrow is glitched outwards. You'll then have to jump, remove the bomb and pause at the same time. If you now remove the shield in your inventory, then aim and cancel a narrow shot, Link will now have his bomb glitch in his hand. That's not supposed to be there. So if you now hold the run button and walk off a ledge, Link will suddenly start defying all laws of gravity and soar through the air without a care in the world. This in combination with the minigame will allow us to measure distances across Hyrule very easily. So I am by sights as dueling peaks and I totally managed to miss it. Which in retrospect is fine because it doesn't really matter where we measure, only that we have a long straight line with a known distance across Hyrule we could use in Tears of the Kingdom. So it turned out the distance between the Ridgeland Tower and where I ended up near the edge of the Akala region was 5987.5 meters which would mean the distance between those two landmarks would be the exact same in Tears of the Kingdom too. With a reference point for scale finally in hand, I could now import Tears of the Kingdom's map into the graphing calculus tool, GeoGebra, where I drew a line between the starting point at Ridgewood Tower's previous location, and where we landed in the mini game in the Akala region, which would give us a unit distance of 7.1, meaning that we now have the exact measurements of the map image, which would mean we can now just divide the unit distance in GeoGebra with the in-game distance of the same length we find in the mini game, multiplied by the scale value of the map which will make the image of the map one to one with the game. So anything measured on the map in GeoGebra should be the exact same distance as is meant to be in Tears of the Kingdom. I then just multiply the length of the map with the width to get the total size of the overall square of 88.52 square kilometers or 34.18 square miles. Of course the main problem with this method alone is it includes some inaccessible areas here and there. And like my previous videos on measuring game maps, I didn't really want to count those areas since I think it's way more interesting to just know the explorable size of the games and not just the entire map since I think that's more telling of the game's actual size. So I separated the explorable and unexplorable areas by highlighting them in Photoshop. Then I did a pixel analysis which would give me the total amount of pixels included in the unexplorable and explorable areas of the map. Which mean I could just divide that area by the whole area of the map to find the ratio between the explorable and the unexplorable area. Which means the total explorable size of Tears of the Kingdom's overworld is 74.1 square kilometers or 28.61 square miles. Making that one layer of map alone bigger than a lot of open world games. 
RPMs. But some of you may probably wonder why that number sounds so small. And it's not because I measured something wrong, or at least I hope it is not. But it's mainly just how I measured it. So you have probably come across a video game map comparison video on YouTube at some point. But the main problem with the methodology of those videos is that they count the whole square of the map. And not just the actual playable area. Which I find kind of pointless since most of the time only around 20% of fewer of those maps are actually well accessible at all. So let's use an open world game like Elden Ring as an example and compare to Tears of the Kingdom. Well, Elden Ring is usually considered to be around 100 square kilometers, give or take, which would already make Tears of the Kingdom bigger. But those estimations wouldn't really be a fair comparison to the estimation we have found for Tears of the Kingdom, since the Elden Ring wants include the whole square of the map, and not just the explorable areas like I calculated for Tears of the Kingdom. So if we do the same process for Elden Ring's map, we actually find out that only around 16.03% of the overall map is actually accessible by the player, and the rest of the map is basically just wider and other mountainous areas you can access. Which means that the actual explorable size of Elden Ring including the underground areas only ends up being around 20 square kilometers. Comparing that to Tears of the Kingdom's 138.22 square kilometers is absolutely bonkers. Of course, when it comes to open world games, it's not always the size that matters the most. It's how you use that size. Which Elden Ring of course does beautifully. But it's a really interesting point to bring up, and just goes to show how insanely big Tears of the Kingdom actually is compared to other open world games. Especially considering it runs seamlessly on 7 years old hardware. But anyways, let's go back and finally finish the measurements. So, as the most astute Zelda fans out there might have noticed, this methodology wouldn't really be accurate alone. Since unlike Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom's open world is split into 3 layers. The overworld, depths and the sky islands. But luckily we could just easily stack the maps on top of each other to avoid having to remeasure every map individually. So the squares of each of the individual maps would all be 88.52 square kilometers. Of course, this doesn't mean the whole map would automatically be 266 square kilometers, don't deal, since most of the sky islands at least is just air, and not actual land mass. So counting all of that area nonetheless would feel really inaccurate. So I imported the map of the sky islands into Photoshop where I yet again highlighted every island or land mass I could find. Then I did a pixel measurements of those islands and the area of the entire image. Dividing the total pixel count of the sky islands with the total pixel count of the entire map would net us a ratio between unexplorable and explorable areas of the map. And since we from earlier established that the entire square of the map has an area of 88.52 square kilometers, we could just multiply that size with the ratio we found to get the total size of each of the explorable sky islands, which turn out to only be 2.18 square kilometers or 0.84 square miles, which isn't exactly a lot, especially considering how hard Nintendo pushed the sky islands as the main theme of Tears of the Kingdom during all the trailers and promotional material. But despite all that, I feel there's still an amazing addition and a very important part of the game which really serves to freshen up the whole experience. But lastly we have the area that almost had the exact opposite effect from the Sky Islands, in that most originally thought the depths were just going to be a funny little cave system that could be completed in a jiffy, only pertaining a few hours worth of content. But oh boy were we wrong, because it turned out the depths alone were nearly the entire size of the overworld, which is already insanely huge. So I naturally did the same methodology I used to calculate the size of the sky world to get an accurate estimation of the depths, and found that the depths have an extremely respectable size of 61.94 square kilometers or 23.91 square miles. So now that we finally have everything we need to calculate the entire size of Tears of the Kingdom, so I just plugged in the numbers to find the sum of the overworld, depths, and the sky world to get Tears of the Kingdom's final size of, drumroll please, 148.22 square kilometers or 53.36 square miles. Even though it may not sound like it, that is extremely big in terms of open world games, and was actually way bigger than I was originally expecting, and means that Tears of the Kingdom is nearly double the size of Breath of the Wild, again that was already considered one of the open world titans. Yeah, the Tears of the Kingdom is just a Breath of the Wild DLC crowd has been real quiet lately. So, if you have any questions regarding the calculations, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate the like and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel out. Alright, bye!